I was going to bust out. Um, it's a beginning a to freestyle? look a lot like Christmas. Because we are moving into freaking December here. Ding, 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 ding. I mean, ding, ding, I'm psyched. Ding, ding, ding. Those are my sleigh bell noises. But I love them. Dun, 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 dun. That's the opening to my favorite Christmas song that you argue is not a Christmas song. And I'm going to fight it. Not You don't argue that it's... Not a Christmas song. You argue that it's not the right answer of what is the, your favorite Christmas song. Yeah, yours is I had to like, fight that last year. Your, Christmas rapping. Like skate- <laughs> Christmas rapping. By the waitresses. It's rapping W R A P P I N G. So <laughs> it's like a play on words. It's just, know. that's really a terrible pick. <laughs> <laughs> this year, my, my mission will be to find a new no. favorite Christmas song. No, you it you're, broaden you should, my horizons. You, I thought you were going to say a new co host. <laughs> <laughs> ah! God, are Someone you who appreciates Please. your musical tastes. No, nah, you know what? Not even Ren appreciated that. Like, he was like, yeah, I'm with Susie. It's like, yeah. That's not the right What's Ren's ah, favorite Christmas song? Did, did he mention? I don't have to rem- find out. Oh, I don't remember what he said. I can't remember. We're going to have to ask him again. All I know is I just am so excited for Christmas this year. Me too. I mean, I guess What's we're just What's your favorite like, part? What do you... What do you, you know why, Suze, it's like what I was saying with Halloween about how Halloween was like too spooky this year. Yeah. It was too real. So now I want like, because what do we love about Christmas? Togetherness, coziness, warmth by the fire, which for me will just be a lot of candles. Yes. Comfort and, like, and joy. Comfort and joy. Yes. And so I am bringing in the comfort and joy and I'm extra excited because I threw a Christmas in July party where I got to use all of my colorful Christmas stuff. And, you know, because I went from, like, a big house to, like, a small apartment. So before I had all the room to do multiple, like, Christmas themes and, like, you know, the office has one theme, the living room has one, blah, blah, blah. Now, yeah, problems of muttons, I know. Uh, And then this year I did, like, the Christmas in July. So now I feel like I got, they got, you know, their proper use. And now I get to stick with, like, a nice traditional, you know, calming, nice classic Christmas theme. I'm very excited about this. I am excited. It's the little things, right? Yes, Ugh. it is. I mean, we have gotten through this year and we ought to be able to, you know, celebrate safely, but, you know, with a, like a grateful spirit. Yes. Um, and all that mm. jazz. I just am really into it. Yeah. And I love every year. I don't even know if you know that I do this, but I like picking out an ornament for you guys. I love And I always like tie ornaments. them to your to your presents and so I'm always like, ooh, I got I think I got you a lollipop one one year or something like that. But so I'm like, ooh, what ornament am I gonna tie on Susie's gift this I year? I love getting ornaments because mm-hmm. every Me year too. you get them out and you're like, Oh, I remember this special thing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I remember one I bought the year that we started brain candy. And it's oh. like a piece of candy or something like that, and I have it on my tree and it always reminds me of that. I mean, I really if we're not careful, one. we're really going to lose our street cred with all this cheer. What do we need? More sass? More, more, <laughs> more, more. I mean, we bah do humbug? have a reputation. I can bring that. <laughs> Luckily, <laughs> knock on wood, there haven't been any leaks in my ceiling recently, so we good. Oh my God, thank heavens. Yeah, I am a little bah humbuggy about how early we start Christmas. Like, why? Come on. Not like, because, because well, really, it's because... All of when I'm like ready to start, here's the order you take out your Christmas stuff, you set up your Christmas stuff, you go shopping for more Christmas stuff because you're like, ooh, what would what, what mm-hmm. would I like to add to the collection? If you do that in that order and you start and you like start putting out your Christmas stuff on December 1st, you're already too late and everything at Home Goods and Michael's is sold out. Is that true? So you gotta, for sure, <laughs> all the good stuff. They're like practically the putting stuff. out spring and like summer, like, you know, come stuff on. again. It come like Dece- for sure. At, right around like because they're already out. The Halloween stuff has already gone was already gone. I remember I went like October 20th, maybe no more Halloween stuff, all Christmas stuff. So that stuff's already sold out by Thanksgiving because everybody like wants to have all the stuff decorated up by Holy Thanksgiving. Holy heck. I guess I didn't mm-hmm. know I'm behind. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. You, you, you've got a good Christmas, like you've got good Christmas stuff and like your, you've got your manger, you've got all like, yeah. what do they call that? Ma- is that a main? What do they the call nativity. that? The nativity. Nativity scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yes. maybe you're just like not on the regs shopping for Christmas stuff. I usually do the post Christmas like 
clearance uh-huh. dealio. Yes. That's yes. always fun because then the next year when you unpack, you're like, oh, yeah, that got all this cool I do stuff. love that. Yeah. I do love that. Yes, that was Halloween this year. <clears throat> Woo. Yes. Well, I have a, I'm going to kick off with a story that has absolutely nothing to do with Christmas. Um, mm. I just read this story in the New York Times about this American tourist who was in Thailand at a resort and he was crabby about a corkage fee. And so, you know, which I get. Yep. Um, and he posted a negative review on TripAdvisor about the resort. And mm-hmm. the resort decided to press charges. Whoa. And the tourist had to go to jail. Whoa. For real. Whoa. And he was going to face years in prison. And thankfully, TripAdvisor paid for his attorney's fees and stuff and um, arranged a settlement with the resort. Oh, my God. For real. Okay. Don't litter and don't leave bad <laughs> reviews in Thailand. I couldn't believe it. And then in the settlement, the resort made TripAdvisor promise not to give them one of these, like, I guess there's some color badge that means that they don't recommend staying there. So they yeah. couldn't put that up. So <sighs> TripAdvisor was like, okay, fine. that We'll agree to that. We won't put up the brown badge. But then they just afterwards and after the tourists got home, they just created like an entire alert on the resort that wow. said like, don't stay here. <laughs> wow. So, but well, was I mean, this place shady? Was this like a... The picture looked beautiful. It didn't oh look like God. a dump or anything. And I just can't believe that that's allowed there. And I told yeah. Adam because he used to live in Thailand and he was like, yeah, that sounds like Thailand. Yeah, that in a way does kind of sound. They are kind of like, what's the word? Tyrannical is that kind of a one? Well, that, they definitely like, have a lot of corruption. and Corrupt. Yeah. Like he, my, when Adam lived there, he went to a New Year's Eve thing at a nightclub with and it was very similar to that thing that happened in new england where the pyrotechnics um Mm -hmm. set Mm -hmm. the place ablaze so adam was barely made it out alive of that fire and then was visited by the people who owned the nightclub but one of whom was the chief of police and they basically said if you say anything you're dead no yeah i didn't know that part Mm -hmm. like if like you can't sue them Oh, they gave you 10,000 baht, which is like $300. They were like, here's 100 uh, bucks. Never speak of I would be traumatized. This. That's like extra traumatizing. Right? It like adds another layer because it's like invalidating to your experience. And now you're like double victimized. Oh, I am so sorry for Adam. I mean, that is really I didn't traumatic. know that part. Mm-hmm. And like he uh, was in the hospital. He had like flesh hanging off his ears and stuff from oh, fire. Oh, what? And they're like, yeah, don't tell anybody. God. <laughs> okay. Come but on what now. if, I mean, because if you're an American Ow. in Thailand and you're at a very beautiful resort, you kind of trick yourself into thinking they have the same rules and expectations right. as the West. But then you leave a negative review and they're like, yeah, you're going to jail. Wow. Didn't, oh my God. And then that makes you think like they're, you know, called the land of a thousand smiles. Right. And, uh, which I'd be smiling are. too. It, which yeah. they are. It's wonderful. But it really is crazy that it's it's such a bit, like because my experience with Thailand is so wonderful. It is my I always yeah. say it's my favorite place I've ever traveled, and it really is like hot or cold. Like you know, yeah, you can't let your guard down. Yeah. Interesting, because, yeah, I just heard, yeah, interesting. Wow. I mean, God, every experience we terrifying. had in Thailand was so a good. positive one. So much so, so, in fact, that, like, I got all the pictures digitized through Legacy Box. Oh, yes. Oh, good. Our snorkeling one. That's how you're able to find it so fast and send it to me. That's right. That's why I can post it on Instagram because thanks to the good people at Legacy Box, you can take all those memories and digitize them and talk about a great gift. My friend Cassie just got this for her mom and dad. And so they're going through all those old like film reels and VHS tapes and they're sending them there and then they're going to get them back in a digital form so they can share them and keep them safe. And I just think this is such a wonderful thing to do for the holidays for someone that is in your family, your parents. It's perfect. It's what we really are valuing right now. 
No more Ain't taking pictures of a picture. I'm done with that. <laughs> I have done that more times than I care to so admit. So many. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's a great way to preserve your memories and rather than let them collect dust in your closet or your attic, you can actually enjoy them. Um, And they have a great deal going on. Uh, This is the best deal of the year. So please, if you're even thinking about it, go for it. Go to LegacyBox.com slash brain to take advantage of this limited time offer. You get 60% off. The exclusive offer won't last long, so order their kit now and send it in whenever you're ready. It's a sale to remember. Go to LegacyBox.com slash brain and save 60% while supplies last. Holy it's crud. A great 60%. deal. I know. Never get that. Never say I didn't get It's better than those anything. Halloween clearance items. <laughs> You're still thinking about them. I am. I'm still bitter. <laughs> okay, Missing moving on. Yes. Uh, next up. So I was wound up about that. Um, okay, this cracked me up. There was a paleontology conference, and of course, they have to do it um, via Zoom or one of these. Mm-hmm digital conferencing systems and they had set it up so that they had um basically censored any inappropriate language in chats and in presentations Mm -hmm. and um unfortunately they went a little too crazy because this hypersensitive sensor it wouldn't let like for instance one of them had like a um a dinosaur specimen from a place called Hell Creek. So then when he put it up, it like just had like asterisk, 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 whatever, instead of the word hell. But it's hilarious because it also... It also Unintentional censorship. It also censored the word bone. Which oh my I God. So funny, given that paleontologists, that's pretty much all they talk about. Oh, that's hilarious. And like the list of other words that they censored cracked me up. So here's some of them. Uh, pubic, stream, <laughs> beaver, <laughs> ball, ball, come well, on, ball. B- b- singular? Just one. Oh, <laughs> Just for the goodness one sakes. Ball. Well, that's too much. Stroke. Oh my God. <laughs> Wang. Well, you know. Oh, but here's there's, the some, there's some scientists who are not getting credit. That's correct. It oh. said that Wang, they had a Western bias. So Wang was banned, but Johnson was not. So jo- what? like Western. What about paleo- Dick? What about Dick? <laughs> what about Dick? What about Dick? I'm sure Dick was. Oh my God. That is so funny. So like a lot of the Chinese paleontologists were censored and like, you know, this is That's a, a lot up. of people. So all <sighs> the Wang paleontologists did not get credit. Okay, come on. These headlines just write themselves. (laughs) This is too funny. (laughs) Like, talk about, as you say, unintended consequences. They just did not think that one through. That is so funny. But I love when, like, have you seen, I think it's some late night host who does, like, uh, uh, unnecessary censorships and they'll bleep out, they'll add a bleep when it just looks like they're saying a word and then it makes <laughs> it seem like they're saying something even worse. So okay. by bleeping out these things, it looks like they're saying like something worse when you put asterisks there. I feel, asterisks. I just feel like asterisks. censorship is ridiculous anyway. I really yeah, don't like hierarchical cares. language. I don't know. Yeah. It just makes me crazy. It's just a word. Yeah, who cares? But and like, who's getting mad? And the are paleontologists really like such? They were trying to like. Uh, why do they have an open chat? And and, and are <laughs> I have so many questions. I have so many questions. First of all, is this an open chat like where like or open forum or whatever where anybody from the public can join? So they're worried about like heckling and stuff like I that. I don't think so. I think it was just an academic conference. Then why are paleontologists not on good behavior in chat? Why can't they be trusted? I, yeah, to I can't not imagine this is even a big problem. Is it a problem? No, they probably... Oh my gosh, this is too funny. Who wrote this? They were probably worried that like they'd have a Jeffrey Tubin situation. Oh my God. You can blur the word dick, but you can't blur the actual dick. <laughs> That's right. a problem. Right, that is. Stop it. Oh God, that's funny to me. Okay. Yeah. Um, what oh my god what if what if like 
Because, like, what if it, like, recognized any phallic-shaped objects and it blurred that? <laughs> so here they are holding All up the bones. bone. And it just looks like they're holding a giant fell in the blank. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. That's too funny. I mean, a lot of times we try to improve our lives with technology, but things happen. And then, you know, it's worse right. than it would have been otherwise. Right. Right. It draws too much attention to it. It's like the... The Streisand effect. Yes. yes. I was like, is it Barbara Streisand? Or <laughs> yes, it's the Streisand effect. Okay, oh, are you ready funny. for Susie's favorite game, The History of dun, 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 The Baby Book? Oh, I love a baby book. <laughs> I knew you were going to say As that. As the firstborn child, I love it. Right. Ask Lucas, he hates it. Right. As the fifthborn child, uh, what's you don't, a baby book? Did you even book? get one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm dying. That's so true. Tell oh, me my what God. your baby book looks like. Oh, it is. Could not be. I still have it. It's now. It's in my possession because I'm like the holder of all of our memorabilia. Yes. Um, <laughs> it is so full and like, oh my God. like you can't even close it. It's got my first lock of hair in it. It's got every picture from like everything was documented. Like my mom will tells anybody who listens and even people who aren't listening that she never puts me down never put me down for the first three months of my life and she means Aww. never put me down like she showered like i was like no. attached to her for which you know that's so how they sweet. do it and like other yeah so uh she, i she gave me all of that love and attention that you could possibly wonder need what happened in three months she was like fuck this <laughs> that's squirmy. <laughs> oh, no, that's funny. She probably was like, God, I'm, I'm getting, my hips are getting tired holding this thing. <laughs> did you guys like Something. co-sleep and all that? I'm sure I did. I'm sure, I don't yeah. know, actually. It was kind of the age of the best. I'll have to ask it's her. It's so true. She'll that be more than happy popular. to tell me. Yeah. <laughs> so like it's, it's, I love hearing stories about that, of course, too, but she loves to tell it. So it is yeah. funny though, how, you know, with your first child, it, it is so precious and meaningful and everything's so important. And then by, you know, even by number two, I, from what I hear, people mm-hmm. are like, you know, you get over it. Yeah. It started to just drop off as, you know, but I look at my, my <laughs> own, you know, many like journals that I've started and like, yeah, kinda, yeah. sometimes I finish them, but not like the ones I'm worse at the ones that are, you know, like the baby books, how they have instructions almost they're mm-hmm. like a guide like i i'm better if it's just a free form journal so maybe it's the structure <laughs> where i'm like don't tell me what to do but well, what's that's the history what I found of really interesting is what you're saying how i didn't realize that the the ones that have those instructions and like mile markers and uh, developmental tips and stuff those were by design and they were encouraged by the public health um you know oh. industry and oh. I think it's so cool because I had no idea. I thought everyone was just commemorating their fucking babies all the time, but it really was wow, about. Wow, look at that. Yeah, it was meant to prevent infant mortality. And <sighs> that's when its emergence, you know, coincided with changes in infant mortality and was a way to remind people of like medical care, um, track development. And I, I just love never that. knew that. I like that. Well, you know what? This is kind of like those baby apps, like the apps that yes. track your, uh, this is totally that version. And yeah. it's like, oh, look at how cute. You know how we, we've even joked about that. Like your baby's the size of a blueberry. Your mm-hmm. baby's like, it's adorable. And it also serves a function. Wow. Yeah. Which I think is so cool. Cause you take for granted that everyone knows what a perfectly, a properly outfitted nursery might look like, but a lot of people don't. So this is a way for them to know here's what is best for baby, perfect diet for baby. And oh. then like, you know, they would even mothers started recording their baby's accidents and their attempts to discipline them. But then it said as the emerging field of child psychology grew and emphasized infancy as like a critical juncture of development, the focus changed and like the mothers would record their attempts to conform to these new concepts of like modern motherhood. And I just love that. I love that we're still, I mean, I... I feel that sense now, like there's all these expectations and you, you just want to do your best, but 
like culture changes, guidelines change, and it can be difficult to sort of keep up with it. I also love just as a historian myself that we always learn that there's a lot of records about official things, you know, like somebody's baptism or uh, when they got married, when they died, the things that are rituals, but also important for like public works. Yes. Yes. But we don't often have like, they, we might have their bat- baptismal gown, but we don't have like what they wore every day, you know, mm. hundreds of years ago I'm talking about. Right. And so right, right. I love that these books are proving to be a resource for historians who want to understand how it really was for mothers. <sighs> Time capsules. Than, yeah. Way, of the experience. Rather than just like medical records or whatever that don't give you the <sighs> true sense, you know? Yes. So that's fun. That's really cool. And it's, and it's when you pose it as like a baby book that you're doing for the baby and for you, that's fun and I want to do that. Mm-hmm. If it's like, can you please track your d- the develop? Yeah. That's work. Mm-hmm. Right. Put it in adorable little bo- Yeah. I, I, I love that. I didn't know though that, you know, people are really just sharenting, like putting everything online and not really doing baby books anymore. I didn't know that. Oh, I would be a baby book person. Yeah, me. I I have one for Lincoln, and I thought everyone oh, still did yes. that. Yeah. Oh. Well, well, whenever you look at that lock of hair in the baby book, do you think about function of beauty and how you've maintained that baby uh, softness? Uh, I'm telling you, it really <laughs> does feel like I have freaking virgin hair again. It's virgin. amazing. <laughs> Yes. We love Function of Beauty. It is personalized hair care. And actually, they have body care now, too, lotions yes. and stuff. Oh. I just love that you can go on and take this quick quiz, and then you get a custom solution just for you. Because, frankly, not everybody's hair is the same, and everybody has different needs and wants. For sure. So why not customize it just for you? It's like, you know how when you leave the salon and it's like perfect? Well, it's because yep. they have a lot of different kinds to choose from. Yes, So this exactly. is like a salon situation at home. Plus, it's all clean ingredients. They don't have sulfates or parabens and stuff like that. And it comes right to your door. And at this time, we don't want to be going shopping unnecessarily. So what are you waiting for? Go to functionofbeauty.com slash brain candy to take the quiz and save 20% on your first hair care order. Go to functionofbeauty.com slash brain candy to let them know you heard about it from our show and get 20% off your hair care order. That's functionofbeauty.com slash brain candy. And you can look like Sarah. And I don't know if I mentioned this last time, but one of my favorite things is the that a little goes a long way. I am still on bottle number one of mm-hmm. conditioner and shampoo. Yeah. And that never, you know, it's always like you burn through one. Yeah. Fast than the other. I'm still going through them like this. You, you get your money's worth. I had to buy shampoo and conditioner before. It was like, oh, what, what am I going to use this week? Buy this week. Now it's been like months. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, like, because you get your money's worth then because you you just can use a little bit. Plus, it's better for the environment. Yep. Oh, I love that. Okay. Um, Let's see. I guess we'll talk about garlic and social class. Mm. (laughs) Like that they go together? Yeah, I read this academic article about how garlic has long been associated with lower class. No way. And like back I was thought I would have thought the opposite. Well, yeah, because now it's like, I want all the garlic and it's at all the restaurants. It's just like garlic, 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 but not so before. Apparently, um, in Italy is sort of like the U.S. in the sense that Southern Italy is seen as like lower class. You know how like Southern U.S. has that stigma as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so they were more inclined to add tons of garlic to their meals and people often associate smell with whether or not you're like high society. Like if you smell bad, then oh my God. you're like dirty and a loser. Well, yeah, but I love how garlic smells. Oh my God. Me too. Like when you, when someone's cooking with garlic, oh, my mouth Cooked waters. or uncooked. <laughs> I even like, like I'll bite into a piece of garlic and just like give it a little, I don't even care. I thought it was so interesting, though, because, like, they were saying how northern Italians would refer to southern Italians as, like, spaghetti benders and grape stompers and then garlic eaters. It was like a slur. 
that is re- I'm gonna have to ask my mom about this I, this is the yeah. first I'm hearing of this <laughs> and like well and then it bled to immigrants so uh, southern Italians tended to be the ones coming to America in the early 20th century and it, they were shamed for the way they smelled and the food the, the way the food smelled and you think about what? it now have you ever lived in an apartment building with someone who cooked like Indian food or something or even Mexican. Mm. Thank goodness I have not had any weird smells coming from anywhere, but I enjoy those smells. So it's like I can't even. Well, to me, I'm it's like white think. supremacy because, like, basically bland European food was fine, but anything that right. was flavorful, like Mexican, even Jewish, like pickled fish. Um, yeah. or wow. garlic, these were seen as dirty and stinky. And so they were not totally American. And we like everything bland, I guess. We d- I won't say we, I won't even lump myself into no. that category, but Americans do. Ugh. But isn't it's it so- gross how like we can be racist about fucking anything? Anything. And you know what? The awful thing is, is food, as I've seen in a million different, um, you know, the food, well, f- Somebody Feed Phil is a very good example. Food brings us together. Yeah. And and people are using it to drive people apart, and I don't like that. Yeah, like they have all these recipe books from like hundreds of years ago where they would be like, if you must, you can include a quarter of one clove of garlic. But it was like seen as really sinful and terrible. I don't understand why not seasoning your food is seen as like <laughs> high, high society, class. right? What the fuck is that about? Is it supposed to be like the food is the it's such good quality that it doesn't need oh. any seasoning? Because that like you know like people who are like oh this you don't even have to add anything to the whatever it's like it's not even know, true not, though it it's not true yeah especially not in our age of like genetically modified food where my tomatoes taste like chalk. I know that makes me really sad. Do you think that that, so if you, let's say you use a seed from a tomato like that, but you plant it in really rich, nutrient dense soil, will it taste better or is just doomed? I think it might taste better. Okay. I'm hopeful then. Because I think that the nutrient, I mean, it comes, gosh, because I know that you can, with adding different fertilizers and like different like natural fertilizers, even I was just reading this other day, like ground up worms, stuff like yeah. that. You can get mm, like a, a more flavorful or, or um, like fruit with a, a darker color. You just have to, you know, takes okay, work good. and time and energy, I think, and sunlight and all that good stuff. So but I, was worried I don't know that because we were the like one thing that I'm them. terrible is growing f- anything that you eat. I can huh. grow plants like no problem, like in the house and. And, you know, flowers, plants, all that. But I have a problem with food, that, with ones that are edible. I have, I, I You'll get work there. There's still time. I'll get there. I'll get there. I'll get there. I need actual land, I think, will be helpful. It's hard to do it in a... <laughs> Sarah, I know you weren't meaning to be funny, but that's really funny. Yeah. I need land. So I, need, <laughs> I need more than just a, a Cause plant Because it is an box. ambitious idea to grow vegetables when you have like a balcony only a balcony yeah, yeah. Thanks, you got i got basil and i got thyme and i got uh <laughs> uh some rosemary and that's about it that's enough that's good yeah yeah, yeah don't thanks. be hard on yourself so supportive. So supportive. <laughs> um okay a quick one let's see but now i have more questions about garlic is oh, okay. garlic like because then I thought about how fast it does grow. And maybe yeah. it, is it one of those like kind of like potatoes where it's seen as – because I see – I kind of think of that as, as you know, the Irish and, oh, the potato eater kind of thing. True. And it's just a very cheap, um, you know, fast growing Well, this root. is sort of what I don't – they didn't say in the article and I didn't know was like what – is it – it's the chicken and the egg thing where is it like we hate that person so then we hate what they eat. Or we don't like uh, the smell, so then we hate the person. I don't know which way it goes. Right. Cause it, right. I don't either. But it's probably the former where it's like, I hate you, so then I hate the food you yeah, eat. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Because I do see what you're saying. If if I can imagine somebody having a neighbor that would cook um, any kind of ethnic food and people being like, oh, that smells like blah, 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 you know. Right. 
yeah. Well, anyway, stop being a holes. That's what I say to those yeah. people. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, but one thing you definitely shouldn't stop is wearing a third love bra because oh they're gosh, freaking great. Mine. And matching sets. Don't forget about. Don't sleep on those undies. <laughs> That's actually the next thing on my list to buy is some more third love undies because you're right. Oh, they God, are so cute. My favorite underpants. And um, if you've been in quarantine. You don't realize that it's been a long time. Well, because everybody's, we've been all been on lockdown. And, like, you don't realize that it's been a long time since you probably, like, freshened up the collection. Yes. And it's time. You know? Because it's time. you got to put some hope out there and know that we will need to look decent. <laughs> and we yes. need to support our bosoms. And so yes. Third Love is great because they have measurements of millions of women that help them design these bras with all-day comfort and support in mind. So they have... Half sizes, they have more than 80 different sizes from double A all the way up to I. And um, they just have no slip straps and all this memory foam cups and stuff that make it so you don't even mind wearing it, which is what all I ask for. You wouldn't think we were asking for much, but apparently it took this long to get that. And they have. Well, because they needed to put women in charge. That's why. Amen. They need to actually ask us. There you go. (laughs) Yes. Perfect fit promise as well. So you have 60 days to wear it. And then if you don't love it, you can return it. And then they donate it to a woman in need, which I love. Um, They're quality. They're comfortable. They have wonderful pajamas and robes as well. Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now they're offering our listeners 10% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash brain now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 10% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash brain for 10% off today. I just said to Adam... Uh, I remember now why I always wore a bra in Pittsburgh. I mean, when you're cold, <laughs> it's not very comfortable to go braless, which is what I do in LA. Ah, I uh, did not know this. Yes, I didn't realize it until I came back here and I was like, ah, yes, I need a bra. <laughs> so there you huh. go. Too much information, but you're welcome. Okay. You keep your nips warm. They really do. They protect the yeah. so sensitive, Sarah. Okay. Yeah. I will say that I went surfing uh, with my brother and went in the water and got out. And, oh, my God, they hurt so bad yep, because the they were cold. Ugh. What the heck was th- I didn't even know that was a thing because it was so cold. I was like, ow. Were you wearing and like a wetsuit? I talk to my brother about that. Wetsuit and yeah. a swimsuit underneath. <sighs> but still, I was like, oh, my God, my little babies are so cold. Got to warm them up. There so must I guess be you- something for that. Can you put like something on them? Probably. You know how like runners do that? <laughs> Yeah, they do have that, 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 I do have those sticks, the anti-chafe like glide sticks left yeah. over from, you know, back in the day when I used to like be active and do triathlons and shit. <laughs> now I just drink wine. The end. <laughs> and both are great. That's fine In bras, yes. There you go. Okay. Ah. Would you like, even though spooky season is over, we do like yeah. to pepper these stories in. Would you like to know I more about the Ouija board? Always. Always. Always, do you always, have always, a Ouija always. Board? always. No, but I should. And I want like an old vintage. If they come out with like a Ooh. throwback looking one, I'll be totally on that. Do they have, they've modernized them so they look like. Like I want the box to look like, Ooh. I don't want it to be like from Milton Bradley all over it, you know. <laughs> right. It really cuts down on the spook factor. Yeah. Well, I mean, first of all, do you believe in Ouija boards is what I want to know. I believe in people's psychic energy in energy but i don't believe in i i think that ouija boards put you in a state of mind to maybe be more open to anything else that but i don't think like ghosts are gonna be moving your ouija board thing but i'm okay. into it you know people have all these spooky stories though about ouija boards where they like throw them away and then they come back what's that about what? I've been hearing this since uh, like the satanic panic of my childhood in, oh, in the 80s dude. when they would be like, if you try to throw away your Ouija board, it'll end up back in your house the next day. Oh, my God. Oh, well, I, I, I saved this article. I haven't read it yet, but it's, it's the answer to – it's somebody explains like, cursed objects. So – I can't wait to read that. And then, That's uh, interesting. Uh, so okay. we'll put a pin, I'll put yeah. a pin in that and, and come back uh, to that maybe next time. Okay. Well, so somebody made the, the board, but then it's sort of like all these old timey things where like whoever makes it never gets the credit. It's always like the right. um, opportunistic 
uh, entrepreneur who's like, that sounds great. I'll steal that patent. And then they like right. um, file the patent and then they get all the credit. But one of the makers, this is creepy, uh, died Oof. after falling off of a roof of a building that the board had told him to build. <laughs> what? <laughs> so like one of the people that created the Ouija board had been told by the board to build some building. Okay, but see, there's where the story falls apart. Because, like, th- if we talk about, per- like, the, the, the I- individual's influence on it. So mm-hmm. the board, the, the man got the validation that he needed from asking a board a question that he probably already Correct. had the answer. Confirmation bias. The- confirmation <laughs> bias there. And then... There was, I mean, that's fucking, I love the story. I do too. What happened to me? I'm so cynical. No, I love it. It's a nice balance. Oh, I used to, I I would have been like, well, I still believe that my grandma moved that picture. So (laughs) again, there's balance. Somebody wrote to us and said, listen, had Sarah already told that story or did I have a psychic premonition that that happened to her? And I'm like, I think that was a repeated story. I, yeah, probably. I don't have many ghost experiences. So that, that one comes out every Halloween. Well, it is spooky. Okay. Yeah. So I thought it was interesting. The article described how it grew in popularity during the Great Depression. And it oh. reminded me of how we are right now. So yes. everyone is stressed. Everyone is upset. And what happens when that happens? conspiracy theories run amok and people start concocting all this stuff that makes sense of Uh what they perceive as madness. So as you can probably imagine now that we've been through the pandemic, what the Great Depression was sort of like, I mean, it was way worse. Right, right, right. Yeah. And so people are seeking solace and refuge in things that maybe are dubious and not. I wonder if there's also elements of looking for fat like like answers but yes yes but then also i think about about what you said with the psychics and how we're not seeing psychics be anymore like oh what's going to happen with the, you know what because it's comfort yeah. about other stuff yes you're okay i totally get this oh Suze, good yeah. history of <laughs> when before we started recording sarah and i were talking about how um she was describing oh, how baby, not like during times of distress on like this huge scale, like we're dealing with now culturally and um, medically, yeah. a lot of your defenses are broken down. And so then you're just this shell that's super vulnerable. And what you're upset about is usually like your love life or your kids or something. Yes. And, but really it's because all the other layers are in question at the same time. Yes. You were right yes. about that. You've got to zoom out and look at <clears throat> Yeah. And then, whenever I get in that hole and I'm always like, oh, everything is the worst, Ren will be like, Sarah, you got to zoom out. And I'm like, God, don't use my own therapy advice against me. Yeah. Ah! I mean, and, I, and then I'm like, and then I think about it. I'm like, fuck, I'm right. You are right, right, but it is so I am hard. Right. I know it's so hard when you're in that moment. It's so hard. That's why I say to myself, to my clients, everybody, you got to create the a la carte menu of self-care and like literally have it like written out and in front of you and easy to use. Like if there's anything, like for me, gardening is my self-care. But if I don't have the tools, the dirt, the everything, so I have to like set myself up to have all that like prepped. And then if I feel like, oh, I can't, I, I need some self-care, then it's already there because the idea of like in the moment you need it, having to then think of, oh, what do I do? It's too overwhelming. You can't do it. Yeah, that's a good point. So just yeah, have it so ready. Get your, have whatever it is you want. You, for, are baths lovely? We'll have like the the stuff to get yourself ready for a bath, or have a plan of like a uh, time of like okay, hubby, time for you to watch the kids. Like it's you bath know, I'm time. taking a bath. Like it's bath time. Like set yourself up for success, so that when those moments come, you can be like, okay, I need to use that. I agree. Instead, yeah. yeah, rather than using a Ouija board. But you can do that well, too yeah, if right, you think right, that's right. super fun if and If that's great. what, yeah, and if that's what, if, if you're like, oh, I got to go to my Ouija board and that's like your time to chill and meditate or whatever the heck that, that is, then do that. But make sure you have the Ouija board ready to go. You're not going to be like <laughs> able to come up with new ideas <laughs> okay. in the moment is what I, is like what I'm getting at. So yeah, whatever brings you peace and, and I get it. I totally get that. Don't we see like a, it's almost... 
I wonder if people are getting more relig- religious now. Definitely. Or, I think that not, is. Like, I, I, not religious like going to church. But what we're seeing a lot of is people moving towards new age stuff and astrology, especially millennials. There's been a big push. They Basically, people in the millennial range usually grew up with a religious tradition, but then they abandoned it as adults, but they still have that urge. And so they've yes. replaced it with things like astrology, um, crystals. We're seeing a lot of that new agey stuff um, becoming popular as well. <sighs> Love when Susie drops the knowledge. (laughs) Anyway. Yes, tell me all about that. I'll tell you all about uh, how you can ship stuff right from your house, too. You can love that. Stamps.com? Stamps.com. And I just re-upped and had them send me uh, uh, some of the the, uh, stamp, stamp, like printable sheets. Yeah. So I just pop that, you know, because you hear, if you've listened to the show, you know about how bad I am at having stamps around. It's so so Now I got stamps.com and I always do. Yes. Uh, here's my th- my pitch because it's, we're moving into the Christmas season. We're not going to be able to see everyone we want to see this year, unfortunately. So shipping is even more important than usual. So for me, it's like this is the perfect time to do the trial because you can see how useful it is, Ooh, how yes. great it is that you're shipping all this stuff and you don't have to leave your house because they have postage for any letter, package, class of mail, anywhere you want to send. You just print it right out, put it on the package, and your mail carrier picks it up. You don't have to do anything. And you can even save money because you can get five cents off every first class stamp and up to 40% off priority mail and up to 62% off UPS shipping rates. So it's t- saving you time and money. Don't spend a minute of your holiday season at the post office this year. Sign up for stamps.com instead. There's no risk. With our promo code Brain Candy, you get a special offer that includes a four week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in Brain Candy. That's stamps.com. Enter Brain Candy, stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. Okay. You actually reminded me of this thing I wanted to talk about because you were saying, what were you saying? Um, oh, just I like. I so much. Well, about taking a bath and like. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Whatever. Yes, yes. For women and like have your husband watch the kids, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So. One of my favorite authors, Anne Helen Peterson, who I've chosen for book club twice, she has a newsletter that I highly recommend. It's free. You can sign up and you get one, two a week. Anyway, she did one this week um, and the title was, Other Countries Have Social Safety Nets, The U.S. Has Women. And it was... Other Countries Have Social Safety safety nets. Nets. The U.S. Has Women. So basically... The system is designed to rely entirely (sighs) on women to make up for things that should come just from paying your taxes and having social programs. Preschool, early, yeah, maternity, after school care, maternity leave. Uh huh. So she interviewed these scholars who were studying this phenomenon and. It, I just felt like it was so important to talk about on the show because our listeners are women, of course, mostly. And you can really. And super woke dudes. Shout out to you guys. Super woke dudes, and who will want to know this too. Yeah. Um, that a lot of times we, as women and especially other marginalized groups as well, like you just think the system mm-hmm. is fair and then you have to work around it and work within it. And so we're not taught to see the forces that operate beyond our control, like capitalism, patriarchy, white supremacy. And like, instead we, uh, these groups are taught to like self-help book our way out of structural problems and how it's all bullshit. Oh, yes. Right? Like, Great. Self-help books, f- fine if, if you enjoy them. But like they are not... Ouija boards, fine if you enjoy them. Yeah, but they're not a replacement for a fair and just society. And like all... I, I think it's on her mind because during the pandemic, we're seeing in the data how women are leaving the workforce because they have to take care of their kids because their kids are home, need schooling and all that stuff. And so, again, women are becoming more reliant on their husbands to earn the money, which is a problem because that gives men an outsized um, domination in the home. And, like, 
also there's all these intensive work and intensive parenting norms. Like think about the pressure on moms to be like perfect. Yeah. Um, and they are powerful because they serve the interest of powerful actors in our society, including corporations and white men. Jeez. And so I just wanted like to shout out to our listeners and be like, just so you know, this is what's going on. And yeah. if you feel like you're sacrificing your career and your life, that part of it is by design and the system wants that. Oh, that sucks. That's really sucks. What do we, I mean, but then like, okay, what do we do when we're aware of it? I mean, basically vote to oh, elect yes. people who support social structures that have, yes. you know, yes. maternity leave, paternity leave, um, oh, preschool, yes. daycare, uh, Medicare. <laughs> like, yes. Like, it's just all fucked. Oh, my God. It is. So Preach, Susie. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, if, if we want structural change, then we have to vote. And um, it's like a reminder, too, of, like, don't just think about the presidential elections, which are very exciting. And, like, oh, that's what right. we get into. It's at your local level, even. Yeah. You know, so just trying to be civic minded oh, in that way i mean it's i even feel like it goes down to who's in the pta i mean come yeah. on it's like for real which things get pushed forward what may i don't know it's all the little stuff just be but aware we just, it's like yeah be aware but there it's a bummer but i like to just like rally the troops occasionally but that's um, a good thing to keep in mind <clears throat> that and yeah, all of that is falling on women's shoulders. And now with the kids being at home and for, with school, it's too much. Well, because remember I did that poll on my Instagram, like, do you know any man who's taking the primary role as the educator in the house during virtual learning? And I think that it ended up being about 80, 20, 80% said women were doing it. That's not ideal. Right. Um, that's not a deal. Oh, anyway, goodness. speaking of like weird women stuff, I'm sure yeah. you've kind of tapped into this either like indirectly or explicitly, but you know, these like weird Facebook kind of like scams where people pretend like they have cancer or something and then they act I've like heard and then they like raise money through GoFundMe and stuff. Oh gosh. It's like the modern, uh, Rose. What's her yes. name? Yeah. Gypsy Rose. But Gypsy Rose. And in fact, they, a scholar called it Munchausen by internet. Oh my God. That's exactly it. And wow. It's so, the weird thing for me was I read this article about it and it said 95% of these scams are done <gasps> by women. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. Wait, mm, why that. is that obvious to you? Because it's the it's the one it's the atten- the same way ninety five percent of Munchausens is women. Yeah, but I don't what, know if that's the actual yeah. thing. But, but it's consistent with this. Consistent, yeah. Okay, why do you think? Oh man, I don't know enough about that to speak on it. But I I want I I kind of feel like I it's it's your chicken or the egg thing mm-hmm. is the way society yeah. structured bring out those kind of. Like that's I don't know. the strategy given D- our resources. Yes, mm-hmm. given. Yes, that's a strategy because we see a lot of things. And then I think about you know mass shootings and what that, yeah. t- or like the serial killers and what that. Uh, uh, yeah, I think know, you hit the nail on the head because in this article it said this scholar said when men act out they end up in prison. When women go. end women act out they end up in doctor's offices. Whoa! Isn't that weird? Whoa! <laughs> Your reactions. <laughs> oh, that was really compelling to me. That is com- because it is me- it is mental illness in jeez. Mm-hmm. So and, oh. this was and often women act out even though they're often in some way the victim. Mm-hmm. Like the like 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 not actual like. But, right, but that's how the, their identity presenting is. Yeah. The, yes, they're presenting themselves as like needing rather than, well, so are the men in a way, but they're interesting. I don't think the men that. identify as victims though. No, they're like, they don't. Because they're angry and and we don't usually associate that with poor me. Right. But when women do it, it's so, I mean, we all know these women too. 
Yeah. Maybe not the ones that have the GoFundMes and the cancer scams, but like the woe is me, like everything's terrible, Eeyore, you know. Oh my God, that was always my favorite character. Sometimes I, wor- <laughs> I just because the last few years have been so tumultuous, I mean, like up and down, I always, I'm like, am I that person? I hope I pep, I have to pepper in, uh, <laughs> no, you're you know, not. some positive things. Your so Tigger, like, ah. if there ever was one. Okay, good, good. Whew. But it's, it was saying basically that women tend to act out in more socially sanctioned ways, but they're just, they're unsavory all the same. And Mm -hmm. um, that they're really not even in it for the money, that they are Uh in it for the care and concern that they mobilize. A hundred percent. Isn't that bonkers? I told, I, yeah, that's, Mm -hmm. that is, that is the Munchausen, that's the um, also, uh, oh, what is it called? Uh, Fictitious illness. Now they call Munchausen's. It's fictitious right. illness imposed on self or imposed on another, or mm-hmm. on self or on another. I have the DSM right in front of me. I could even look that shit up. They yeah. did say as just sort of a help, in, you know, when you're seeing some of these on Facebook or something, that mm. it's very hard to tell if it's fake because each situation is unique. But one red flag is that if it's like if you're truly sick with cancer or something, you have a lot of days that are just sort of boring and you're just binge watching Netflix and resting. But in these mm-hmm. um, GoFundMes, it tends to be very high drama all the time. Like um, it, uh-huh. it's urgent all the time and nothing's working and they need it immediately. And any kind of like constant drama, they said, is a good red flag for those yeah. scams. Wow. Jeez. And, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, I can't relate. It, 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 I can't relate either because I wouldn't want, <sighs> yeah, I, I don't, I don't want, I like want the opposite of the pity. I want people to be like, nah, look at, she's surviving it. Look at it. Right. That's my you know? big thing. I, yeah, that's the last thing I want is people to think I need help <laughs> even when I do. Right. <laughs> um, okay. Moving on. Oh, my final gosh, story for the day. Um, someone listed, I think uh, Brainiac sent this to me. I can't remember the name, but someone listed a coffin with a real human skeleton on like Facebook marketplace for a hundred dollars. And I just think it's what? A, a number one hilarious. And the coffin. Way too cheap. I know. I thought that's a real bargain. Wait, you didn't even want to auction this thing off? You got a bunch of weirdos out there who are like. So apparently this to, guy, At least to the cannibal corpse guy? Right. That could have gotten a good price. Well, evidently this guy was a member of something similar to like the Masons or like Elk Lodge or whatever. And they had this ritual where new recruits would have to sort of, I don't know, look at this coffin skeleton guy and recognize their own morality and mortality. And the message was supposed to be if unless you're helping someone, you're dead. I don't know how that is necessary to have a skeleton to accomplish nope. that, but don't no nope, no. Nope. They were like yeah. liquidating, and so he's like, I talked to my friend who's a, works at a funeral home, and he felt like it would be okay to sell it because the coffin had a window in it, you know, like one of those creepy dictator ones. Yeah. So you could see like the <laughs> the head and the torso. And he said, but the skeleton was like nailed down. So this was clearly meant for display or most likely was donated for science. So mm-hmm. it's they were arguing it's not unethical to sell it because they don't need to be buried because they never had that intention. But what do you think? Do you think that's unethical that they should just have buried it? Well, I think <laughs> if, if it in the state of California, it is illegal to buy and sell a... Uh, I know this Human because body I tried to, parts and no, stuff. How right? about animal body parts? I can't <laughs> buy. I tried to get a skull, like a nice antler set, like you know, for my house, and because I used to do a bunch of art projects. With that I went to my regular skull guy that I went to for like five years, and yeah, I had a skull guy. Stop! Stop! I, <laughs> stop! It. And he told me he can't. He in the state of California, he can't sell them anymore. Wait. So you can't sell that because they're trying to discourage hunting. Sarah, all of this is true. <laughs> what do you mean, your re- regular skull guy? 
I used to use a lot of like oh. antlers and stuff like that, and I would do these <laughs> Etsy art projects where it would I would take a like a skull, like a deer skull, and I'd I'd put. Um, like succulents and and flowers and stuff like that on the top oh. and like mount them and I sold them online. I but made a pretty it? penny doing that and they're really beautiful <laughs> but and they look super cool. And so I had to get the pieces somewhere. Isn't he a taxidermist though or something? Like what's his actual? Nah, he was like a dealer. And then everybody knew him as that. I was like, hey, where's the skull guy? Oh yeah, he's over no. on aisle three. No. Yeah. I was okay. the animal skulls guy. Okay, so he for real, have, anybody like, who title. shopped at Seuss, he was at the Long Beach. He was at the flea market we went to. I remember. But I, we did this together. I do. I just didn't know you called him your skull guy. Well, I mean, what else am I going to call him? I didn't know his real name. Steve. Well, like, I would assume he's some sort of. They have to have a real name. Usually, people do. No, 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 no. I oh. mean, like a title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what his title is. He was oh, a, a, a so dealer of, of antiquities. And oddities. And oddities. Oddities and antiquities. So yes. he had to go out of business because it was illegal? It was like drug He didn't go out of business. He just sold other stuff. Like I think there were different – like you can't do the antlers and the skull. There was like something about – That's the, so weird because in Pittsburgh, they're trying to encourage hunting because we have like a deer – Overpopulation. Well, if you have any skulls, send them my way. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of skull guys out here. <laughs> oh my god, a lot of skull guys. Oh, I'm gonna have to. Uh, wow. uh, uh, what is it? Uh, what do you What do you call it when you take it across state lines and you smuggle? I'm gonna have to smuggle it across <laughs> state lines. My brain like disappeared. Yeah, you get me pot, brain. I'll get you skulls. Oh, that's a good trade. Okay, now we need to wind it down. Winding it down. Christmas spirit. Man, we talked about a lot today, Suze. I know. Talked about really the history did. of baby books. Mm-hmm. We learned Susie doesn't even have one. We, no, I, I do, but over- my sister oh. filled it out. Oh. She, oh. My, my older <laughs> sister filled it that's out. That's really cute. <laughs> She's 10 years older than me, so I guess like that's yeah. allowed. But oh. we learned that yeah. you should probably not review a Thailand resort unless <sighs> you're back home safe and sound. Right, or you might end up in jail. And if you go to a wow. paleontologist conference, you might... Uh, and your name is Dick? Don't even bother <laughs> commenting. <laughs> Just zip it. Just keep a, change your name for this a conference. We learned wow. that garlic means you might be low brow. Mm, yeah, but we I don't still have questions that. on that. Yeah, Not at all. That. I reject that. Reje- I do reject it. <laughs> rejected and rejected. we learned that the ouija board is spooky but probably but, not really yeah and also if it brings you comfort what else um and of course um watch out for munchausen by internet scams oh my gosh yes and ladies stop doing that stop if you need attention just dress like miss frizzle like that lady last there time. you go she got plenty That's of attention answer. yeah do that there you go. I like that. Good advice. And don't forget to leave us a five star review and subscribe, yes. please. Yes. And we'll see you and next we love time. You. Love you. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this podcast, try giving my podcast, Miraculous Mamas, a listen. Miraculous Mamas is a safe and inclusive place for you to find a huge amount of educational and relatable information about childbirth and parenting with absolutely everything in between. Each week we discuss important topics, share great resources, hear from experts, and listen to birth stories, all in an effort to bring you reassuring and informative experiences so that you know that you are not alone. That's all on Miraculous Mamas podcast. Look for the podcast link in the show notes or simply search for Miraculous Mamas on your podcast app.